fucking amazing gun. Fucking 9 out of 10. Must own. Fucking get this gun. Turn off this video and go get this gun. Alright? It's good. It's great. Fucking 9 out of 10. Get this fucking gun. See you later. Deck the halls with boughs of holly. Fa la 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 la. Tis the season to be jolly. Fa la 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 la. Gone we now. What are you guys still doing here? I already told you. Go. Get this gun. It's amazing. A 9 out of 10. Go away. Fool me once. I'm mad. Fool me twice. How could you? Fool me three times. You're officially that guy. Okay, you know, you know the one. You go to the bar, he's like, This suit is uh, officially the Giorgio Armani. Edge my dad knows him. Fuck you! I ain't in that shit! Let me guess, you want me to review this gun, right? You want me to tell you why it's a 9 out of 10? You want me to tell you why I'm telling you to- DO IT! it? <sighs> so, folks. Let's go ahead and break it down for the simpletons of why the JG Star Dragon is an amazing gun and why you should have it on your list. Well, we're waiting. <sighs> Let's start off with something simple, shall we? The concept of the gun, why it looks like the way it is. Well, in order for us to do that, we have to go back a little bit in time to movie history and firearms. The most iconic firearms to date, in terms of science fiction, has to be Han Solo's blaster. I bet you have. The DL-44, which is the Mauser C-96. The heavy blaster from the Clone Wars, which of course is... An MG-42. Or an MG-34, depending on how you see it. The pulse rifle. From Aliens, which is a Thompson. Maria rifle. From... Starship Troopers, which of course was a, well, is a Ruger Mini-14 with a Ithaca shotgun under barrel. I think it was an Ithaca. Was it an Ithaca? I'm not, I can't remember which. And then finally, in the world of anime, there is a gun that has been iconic ever since its debut, which was, of course, the original anime for Ghost in the Shell. And I'm a soldier, And this some bitch, everyone wanted the gun, the bullpup. But before the bullpup even came around, did you know there was a gun beforehand that originally was presented but thrown away for one reason or another? That being the dragon, the star dragon, which star in of itself actually stands for strategic tactics and rescue, much like SWAT being strategic weapons and tactics. As for dragon. Meh, I'll leave that one up to your imagination. But, the thing about the dragon is, it is amazing! It is a cool concept. It is literally, basically, an M4, heavily modified to be an awesome little sci-fi gun that is so comfortable and ergonomic that I'm surprised not a lot of people are having one or have improved but Oh wait, they didn't improve upon because the front grip of the sucker is basically a P90 grip. And now that we have P90 grips for M4s and even a stock sort of, for an M4. And I'm not surprised! But, before we continue, let's go ahead and get the elephant in the room. This thing ain't cheap. The price tag of it? Pretty up there. But, we'll get to that later on. But let's talk about the box itself and how it presents itself over other box art, which is kind of hard to come by nowadays. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the box of the Star Dragon. And it's actually a pretty good presentation. A little bit of light blue on dark black and a little bit of gray right there in the middle. Presenting the gun in its 
compact form for those who are short people, midgets, and of course showing the star. But this one right here, I never really did see. It's the P Force USA. I might have to look into that. I'm not sure. I don't like the barcode here, but that's how it is. But the way they present this is actually amazing. Hell, the actual side of it shows this metallic font with this basic font. Again, it looks amazing. <laughs> it really does. But, either way, when opening up the box itself, you actually get a thread adapter and the gun itself with blue tape. Because, of course, it came from Cal California. Fuck you, California. Now... It does have styrofoam, of course, but we don't care about that. We care about the gun, and the gun itself is absolutely amazing! The thread adapter will fit your 14mm negative threading. The magazines it will take, besides the Stenag mags, are, of course, the P-style magazines like this, which, of course, are by GMP. And yes, I have the short GMP magazine to put in here, but I like the look of this better because it just looks really good and really tactical. It's just tactical. And the comfort of the gun... Jesus Christ, I could fall asleep on this in a foxhole. I'm not lying. Because the way this curvature is, it is so comfortable and so good that the only thing it's missing is rubber. It's missing that rubberized coating to make it just all that much more comfortable because Jesus Christ, it contours to my cheek and it feels so good. Not only that, but yes, you have to have the stock fully adjusted in order to actually actuate the bolt. This is not a big issue because some of the guns that have this sort of body kit have that, so I'm not counting it against the gun. Aside from that, the only other gripe I can give you is that the screw on here is ungodly and unwieldy. If they did not do the screw and instead went with a simple button style to do this, or, you know, some of that nature, it would have been fine. Either way, though, the front grip on this bad boy is amazing. You can either do like this, like you would on your P90, and it feels amazing, or you can go like this, still feels comfortable, even go like this, and it still feels comfortable. The grip itself where the motor is, is a marksman style grip, and while yes it may be a little bit uncomfortable for south paws, which I'm sorry south paws, it is uncomfortable for you, for right handed users, this is a godsend. Because believe me, having your thumb resting on something while you're doing, while you're actuating your trigger, is definitely really good and very comfortable. I absolutely love it. Not only that, but the magazines don't drop out like some willy nilly. It actually has enough force to where if you want to be tactical with it, you can be. Now for those of you who want to use your hex mags or anything like that, you're going to have to modify this a bit by shimming this down right here on the body kit. And the cool thing is the body kit is not permanent. You can take the body kit off if you want to. And yes, they give you that option. You, all, they, all that's holding this body kit together is one, two, three, and four screws. That's it. It's simple as that. If you want to modify this and put a better barrel in there, everything like that, which you actually want to do, then you can. Hell, you can do the same thing with the buttstock. You can remove this and do that. And the dumbest thing I ever got when I showed people when I unboxed this on my Facebook and one of the first questions people asked was, am I going to mag pull this? Dumbass! You dumbass! You're a dumbass! Such a dumbass! No! There's not really a way to mag pull something that can't be mag pulled except for the pistol grip. And even then, I'm not wanting to get rid of this pistol grip. I love this pistol grip. It feels amazing! The gun overall is a comfortable gun. And while well, yes, the price tag is a little bit out there, there's a fucking reason for it, and you're going to see it. Because out of the box, this thing is LiPo ready. While, yes, not being the best, not having a lot of space for LiPo, for the big LiPos, like my stick-type stick, like my stick type LiPos, it's still really good. Ah, but I hear you asking, how do you hit the battery? Is it in the buttstock? No, and I do know some of you who are going to try and rewire it to the rear. But the way you actually access the battery compartment is you first unscrew... And this is what I do. You unscrew your thread adapter, which uh, if you've already undid the, undid the screw here, which by the way, just go ahead and undo the screw or remove it entirely. All you need is the thread adapter. And just lightly, and just push forward here. Pull this piece out, and voila! There's your battery. Wired up to a small Tamiya. 
Now, getting it back together is a little bit of a pain in the ass, but, you know, son of a whore. There we go. Now, the bottom rail here, it's polymer, so I would not recommend you try and do anything with it, but uh, just how it is. <clears throat> Aside from that, just go ahead and try and line this back up. There we go. Aside from that, it's definitely a nice little gun. Now, yes, there is... Because it is basically an M4 and it's using the carry style rail on top, you can use that Picatinny rail attachment to basically put your optics on. Me, I'm going to use this to put my optics and uh, a run cam on here so you guys can actually see the accuracy. Now, the way this hop-up is, the hop-up is a crazy good. I'm not going to lie. The hop-up's crazy good because here's the thing, folks. It's insane how good the hop-up is, and you're going to see that. Even with point twos and the hop-up adjusted just slightly, this thing's insane. It's crazy. But, uh, sadly, I didn't have any point two fives to test for the te for the accuracy or range test, so uh, if you guys could donate to our PayPal bit, link down below to help us get more point two fives, that would be amazing. Thank you. We're only asking for a dollar. But either way, though, this... Let's see how this dragon... Bite, shall we? All right, we have the chronograph, a P mag, and my favorite gun of all time. Let's see how she does. Flip it semi-auto on a level one lipo. Let's see how she does. BT Dubs, this is a loud ass gun, so prepare yourselves. Three seventy nine, three thirty, three seventy seven, three seventy five, three seventy six, three seventy four. We're hitting CQB limits, and this thing sounds like a fucking. Best way to describe the way this thing sounds is sort of like you're hitting metal with a sledgehammer. That's kind of how it sounds. Anyway, let's go ahead and get outside and see the range of this bad boy, shall we? <clears throat> All right, with the run cam on, we're going to see how far the BBs will fly, shall we? Now, I know I don't have any front iron sights, but that's just because the lipo keeps them from actually getting on. Anyway, moving on. They're hitting, but with the point twos, they are curving heavily up, but... Pointing it outward, let's see how far she shoots. Way out there with point twos. Though point two fives, they are probably on the mark. Yeah, I know this thing. Oh boy. Get back inside and give it the final verge, shall we? Folks, JG Star Dragon is amazing. I mean, hell, I just noticed this. The small detail there for Special Tactics and Rescue, 556 by 45. Dragon, the kanji, star. Everything about this screams you need it. And you're probably asking, what are the downsides? And why I only gave it a 9 out of 10 a little while ago? Well, it's the battery compartment. Not even joking, the screw right there has got to be the most annoying thing I've ever seen in my life. If only they put a button or something on there. And this is a big complaint all across the board, is accessing the battery compartment. That's it. And I'll give you a good example. Because I know a lot of you are meaning like, oh, it can't be that bad. Well, here's the thing. What if your gun goes down? What if the battery you have in here dies and you need to reach in there? Well, here's what you got to do. you got to put the gun down, have your sidearm out, while pulling out a Phillips head screwdriver, quickly unscrewing it, popping it off, yanking out the battery, undoing the battery, and putting the battery back in along with the extra pieces, then putting the top back on and then screwing it back down. I know a lot of you are going to be like, oh, I'm quick than that. Yeah, sure, okay, but not a lot of us are. Not a lot of us have the quick freaking and eye coordination to basically do that sort of stuff. And another thing, and this is just a personal gripe, not actually on the score, but the body. I know the polymer body's good, I know the polymer's good, but could you not have maybe, just maybe, given us a metal one, aluminum, 
metal, steel, I don't care. A metal body kit for this be, would be amazing. I'm just saying, all this in metal, which don't get me wrong, it's a hefty son of a bitch already because the gun, it's, because the M4 itself is pretty fucking hefty with the damn gearbox, but a metal kit for all this and metal here, but rubberized here would be amazing. This gun is amazing. Everything about this is amazing. It's a beautiful CQB gun, which is why for many people who love Ghost in the Shell are buying these things up whenever they can. Even having a couple to modify themselves. Hell, I actually know a few people who have a lot of these things and they love the hell out of them. Hell, this one was actually donated by a viewer and a fan and a fellow otaku, Marcus out of California, who actually used one of these in his arena. And he's an amazing son of a bitch. <sighs> Either way, though, as I stated before earlier, the only downside and the only reason it didn't get a 10 out of 10 for me or any sort of, or, or any of my highest praises is because of the battery compartment. It's because that little screw. Folks, manufacturers, why give us amazing things, but then annoy the hell out of us when you put this sort of shit on here? Come on! Anyway, like I said earlier, the final verdict of this bad boy is no more, no less than a 9 out of 10, a must own. Get it on your Christmas list. Just go! <sighs> anyway. Thank you all for watching. As always, I've been Airsoft Al, and you know, this Christmas season has been amazing. And reviewing these good guns makes me realize how good things are. Anyway, thank you all for watching and sticking around this Christmas season for these reviews. And I wish everyone a very Merry Christmas, and to my Jewish family and viewers and friends, a Happy Hanukkah. And to those who are atheist, have a good day. Hope you don't die of cancer. And to those who hate my channel, hate my guts, and all around don't like me because I trigger them, go fuck yourself. Go fuck yourself. Go fuck yourself. I've been Airsoft Al. I'm a man's airsofter who reviews bad guns so you don't buy them. And 2018 has been a hell of a year and a hell of a ride. But in 2019, things are going to ramp the hell up, folks. Because we'll be reviewing everything from gas blowback rifles to awesome stuff. Thanks to you guys with your PayPal donations. Till next time.